Hi, this is Steve Barton for Solid Rock Machine Shop Incorporated. Today we're going to be doing the second part of our squareness gauge. The first part is already done, it's waiting for heat treat and that will be the base block right here. The part that we're working on now is going to be the end piece. The end piece, uh, we use the steel, we bandsawed uh, the, the material out of this, we ended up with this extra material. And it worked out nice because we ended up uh, with uh, enough material that we can make the end piece. We're using CPM1V. Uh, it's got some very good properties about it if it's heat treated right. Uh, the 1V will have, uh, if you get the Rockwell right, it will have the wear resistance of D2 air hardened steel. And it will have the strength of uh, approximately S7, which is one of the toughest steels out there. So two excellent properties in the steel. Because we bandsawed the part out, <coughs> we have saw cuts on two edges and when we cut this off at the inch and a half length that we need uh, we're going to end up with a third saw cut so we're going to have three faces that are machine finished and three faces that are band sawed and what we're going to do is we're going to end up with a block like this uh, which will be machined on all sides and the method that we use we had the we, we, we achieved a squareness, a flatness, and a parallelness on this block of about two ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, it's a process that we use, it's very accurate, it's very fast, and uh, it's probably a little different than what you've seen. We're going to be making a multi-part video on this. The first part that you're watching right now will be on how to square block up with that degree of precision. The second video that we'll be making will be showing how that you can use a boring head by turning the boring bar backwards, running the boring head in reverse, and we'll be swinging this uh, approximately a two inch radius uh, on that part. And we'll show you how to set the boring bar up to make a nice accurate cut, a nice accurate radius. So that will be on part two. So uh, we're going to have to dub the audio uh, on the machining uh, because uh, things didn't work out when we recorded it, so we're going to have to dub that in. So uh, we'll get started with the video right now. The first thing that you have to do is we have to try to establish two sides and get them kind of close. Uh, normally, if the if we had a machine surfaces on all of them, we'd start with the widest surface and make them flat and parallel to each other. But in this case, we're going to start on the second nearest and try to get it real close to square uh, with uh, the opposite side that's been machined. We're going to use some... Uh, a paper towel here we're going to roll that up and we're going to put it between the vice jaw and the saw cut so that it can take up some of the inconsistencies and give a little bit better even pressure you can use any soft material on there i've seen people use solder uh, lead uh, you know uh, different different things but it just gives you a little bit holding or a little bit better holding power once you have it established you have it in we'll come up and we'll just take a light cut we'll pull it out and now, at this point, it is not perfectly square with the bottom because the saw cut is distorting it a little bit, but it's a whole lot closer than what it was. So we'll file the edges off, and the next thing what we'll do, we can start working on the widest surface and getting that nice and flat. You want to clean the vise out, and we want to use a tall set of parallels. We use the tall set of parallels for the purpose... Uh, that we want to make the part flat and parallel and if we would drop the part too low on the vise uh, the back side that's touching the back jaw that is the part that is going to probably make it hard to get it flat what we want now in order to have that flat and parallel we want it set and flat on the parallels if your parallels are, are match set they're real close uh, if you can get them in there like that and go uh, uh, your part should come out flat now the first side all I did was put my hand pressure on to hold this down flat uh, I don't want to tap it down I don't want to distort it I just want to get a, a, a nice flat edge we'll file this edge off we'll flip it upside down on the, on the face that we just machined and at this point we're going to tap it down because we want to make sure that 
it's tight against both parallels. Uh, if it's not tight against both parallels and it's tight on one but not on the other, it, it's, it's still way out of square. So this time we'll tap it down. And when you tap down, you want to make sure that you tap it down. Uh, you don't have to really beat it hard. You just have to tap it down. If you, the harder you hit, the more likely that it's going to have a bounce up effect. And it may be touching the parallel enough on some parts uh, and make it feel like it's tight. But in reality, uh, it's really not flat. So a little light taps, that's all you need. Take a light cut. We'll take the micrometer. We'll measure it. See what kind of stock that we have to take off. What I'll do at this point, I'll I usually lower the table about ten thousandths when I run my cutter back uh, to the uh, right side of the part. I do that so that I'm not rubbing the inserts on the part itself. Then I'll come down and I take the extra cut, the amount of material I need. I'll take, uh, in this case, because it was a light cut, I took uh, the, the amount that I needed and just stayed five thousandths shy use uh, five thousandths for my final cut. And the reason I do that is if you take a heavy cut on the back side of the part, you'll throw a heavy burr. Uh, by taking a five thousandths finish pass, you get a nicer finish, plus filing that burr on the back is a lot easier. So now we have the widest surface right now. It should be flat and parallel. We'll throw it over here on the granite. We'll use this as the brown and sharp uh, best test indicator. Each one of those little marks is 50 millionths of an inch increment. From zero to one would be one thousandths of an inch. We'll show you how flat and parallel this is as we uh, run it under. The bouncing that you're seeing is the, the rippling that you have with the, the cutter itself, the finish that it's leaving on. But as you can see that the part itself is just about perfect flat. Now that we have two sides that are nice and flat, it would be a lot easier now to square everything else up to the sides. In the side, you can see the uh, base part of our, our fixture. Uh, this is going to be uh, what the part we're now making on mounts to the front. It will hold a Noga indicator base uh, in the holes on the top. And uh, this will be our squareness checker. Right now, we got those two surfaces, the widest surfaces, we got them flat and parallel. And so now we want to get these two surfaces, uh, the next uh, widest part, we want to get those square with the part we have. And so what we're going to do, we're going to drop it down further in the vise because this vise is tuned and that back jaw is running very perpendicular uh, with the cutter. So when we drop this down, in theory, when we take a cut, we should be able to, the back jaw is what's going to hold it square with the surface we just cut. And when we take a cut on that, uh, we should be square. When we flip it over and cut the other side and make it parallel, we should have these four sides now square and parallel with each other. I usually like to put the block in at least three-fourths of the distance I need. And again, on the first side that I'm cutting, I just put hand pressure. I do not tap that down. I want it to not be distorted. I want it to, uh, the back jaw. I want to use that in order to establish the squareness. If I tap it down I, and the bottom surface isn't quite flat and parallel, I could end up distorting the part and losing my squareness. After I finish that light cut, blow everything out, get it nice and clean. Now the surface I just cut, I can take and I can put down uh, in the vise on the parallels. I can tap it in 
at this point because that bottom surface that we just cut should be square. So now I want to tap it so that it is tight on the parallels. And if it's not tight on the parallels, it's an indication that it's not square and you may have to repeat that step. Took a light cut. We'll take a measurement with our micrometer over here. See how much stock is left. <clears throat> and again, if it's less than a hundred thousandths, I will generally take uh, all the stock off in one cut except for about five thousandths. And then I'll come back with a finished cut of a roughly five thousandths, bring it into size. Just makes it a lot easier to file that heavy burr off as well as establishes a nice finish. At this point, we should have four sides that are flat, parallel, and square with each other. The only two sides we have will be the ends, so it'll be the shortest distance. Uh, that's what we got to bring in next. Try to establish its squareness with uh, the other two sides now. <clears throat> and again, we're going to drop this lower in the vise. Try to get about uh, three quarters of it down in the vise. Uh, we're going to, at this point, we're going to use a, a 45 degree template I got. Uh, we're going to use the 90 degree side of it. This is a very precision tool that I've made. It is very accurate, very precision. In a previous video, I showed that if you hold your part at the end, you get distortion from the vise uh, twisting. So we want to move the part in as far as we can. But one of the problems you'll have with the curved vise with this cutout, many times you have when you come across there, there's a bowl in that vise by uh, two or three tenths. And I do have that here. So if I stick my template, my 45 degree template, if I stick it just on one side of that, I, I know that it's not going to come out square. So what I want to do, I want to take that template and I want to bridge the gap in the middle. And then I know that I'm going to be square in that direction. I believe I'll be close enough to center that I'm not going to get uh, too much distortion from holding the uh, part in the end of the vise there. And so I already know I'm going to get a little bit here, but I'm trying to find the sweet spot, the, the place where I'm going to get the least distortion, and that will be bridging the gap uh, in the Kurt vise. So right now I'm establishing the squareness with my 45 degree template using the 90 degree side. We just take light cuts. We'll file the edges. Make sure there's no burr that's going to uh, mess things up for us. It's real important to keep the bottom of the vise clean, the parallels wiped down, because the least little bit of, of uh, material that could be under there, chips or dirt, even oil, it can alter how square the parts are coming out. Right now I'll be getting a set of parallels, smaller set, and drop them in there. I like to rub my parallels back and forth, just to try to make sure I uh, can't feel anything that's interfering. Sometimes you can't see if there's chips or dirt build up back there, but a lot of times you can feel it. Right now, uh, because we established the squareness of the other side with our template, we will tap this side down. We tap it down until it feels real tight on uh, both of the parallels. We'll take a measurement and we'll just repeat what we've done on the other sides. We'll take all the stock off if it's under a hundred thousand and leave just five thousandths and take a, a nice finish pass at five thousandths. Now 
After this operation, we'll move to the granite table, and I will in, I will get this set up on a, a square block that I have over there that's a very precision ground, and we'll actually check the squareness and the parallelness of this part. As you can see there, uh, we're within about two ten thousandths of an inch. Now we'll mount it to the block. Now that we established that we have our, our surfaces parallel, now we got to check and see if they're square with each other. This block is a very precision ground. Uh, it's five by five inches. It's within probably one ten thousandths of an inch in squareness, flatness, parallelness. So if we mount this block up and we have this surface running parallel with this surface. We indicate this surface so that it's parallel with the bottom surface over here. And then if we check this surface, we can now check and see if this block is at least as square as this block or if it's running out. One little point, when you uh, put a clamp on a part, people just assume that if you got uh, two flat parallel surfaces, another flat surface, you can just put this clamp anywhere and clamp down and it will read flat. That's not true. Uh, I got this adjusted before we were shooting the video and got it indicated in, but I had to move my clamp back about a quarter of an inch so that I can get this surface running parallel with this. So we'll check it right now and see how, how square it is each side with each other. You see going in, in there, we're just about perfect. And before I moved the clamp back, I was getting about two ten thousandths of an inch. Right now I'm reading it just about as perfect as you're going to get it without the bounce from the mill cut. Let's turn it up. So we've established that this surface is running parallel with that surface. We know this block is good and square. So you can see this is running nice and square. We're getting less than a tenth, a one ten thousandth of an inch. So let's set it up on this surface. just about perfect square this way we're out in this direction probably about two ten two ten thousandths of an inch which is for mill is just about perfect so you can see what the process that we used over here that you can get a block very square very flat parallel you can do good work on a mill you have to have a number of things going for you there you have to have good equipment you have to have your parallels, you can't have nicks in them, you can't have dirt underneath uh, the parallels and the bottom of the vise, everything's got to be real nice and clean. Uh, you have to get uh, the vise set so that your back wall on, the, on your back vise, uh, that it's running true, the mill's got to be trammed in. Uh, if you do a, a lot of those things and have your mill and equipment set up right, you can do this all day long, it's real fast, real accurate. And uh, so this is part one. Uh, we're going to go and do part two. We're going to hopefully film that yet today. And in part two, we're going to swing a radius. So I'll show you over here. We'll be swinging this radius over here using a boring head in the mill, having the boring bar in backwards running in reverse. So for those of you who have never seen that happen, uh, uh, look forward to part two. Hopefully we'll have that posted here shortly as well. Thank you. If you like the video, subscribe, hit a like. We'll see you next time.